The Raspberry Pi Pico board with the RP2040 chip is here. Today we'll get it out, get it set up with MicroPython, upload some code to it, blink an LED, and see how easy this can truly be. This episode brought to you in part by PCBWay. Check them out at the link below for your next electronics project. They offer competitive rates for all PCBs, parts, and assembly, as well as 24-7 tracking of your order from start to finish. I'll post a link down below if CircuitPython is new to you, full explanation of what it is and how it works. Basically, it's drag and drop code right onto the microcontroller. Wonderful! You've probably seen the Raspberry Pi Pico boards all over the internet in the last two weeks. It's a wonderful new board from Raspberry Pi. It is a microcontroller with their own chip on board. Very cool. Today we'll focus on getting it started with MicroPython as fast as possible. As I usually do, I've started a GitHub repo for all of my things Raspberry Pi Pico. It's inside my Raspberry Pi repository, and that's where I'll add all the tips, tricks, and handy stuff. You'll see above it, I already have a repo for machine learning. That's where we're going to go with this microcontroller in the next videos. But for now, let's get it working with MicroPython. As always, the easiest way is just a Google search. Sure enough, first result is the Magpie, right from Raspberry Pi telling us how to set everything up. But let's step through it real quick. Instructions say boot us up into boot mode. Hold the button, plug in the USB. Sure enough, there'll be a URL to click. Let's do that. Once we open the URL, it opens us up to the Raspberry Pi Pico page with all the things we want to know. Today, we want the tab for the MicroPython. So scroll down, center of the page, getting started with MicroPython. Easy. Download the file. Once it's downloaded to your PC, drag and drop it right onto the Raspberry Pi that has opened itself as a USB drive where we got the link. Did I mention this is totally painless? I've never had a setup just quite so easy with anything out, outside of the Arduino ecosystem. Sure enough, sets up the device, boom, we have a Raspberry Pi Pico ready to go for MicroPython. One thing I forgot to mention, you need to download the Thony program. This is already installed on Raspberry Pi, but for Windows, I just went ahead and downloaded it from the Raspberry Pi site. For interpreter, you want to check the Raspberry Pi Pico and then select the USB port that the Pico is connected to. No problem. Because I'm super lazy, I go right back to the page we were just on, scroll down to the Hello World example, and copy paste. When paste into Thony, you are going to see that the Pi echoes it right back. We're connected, working, we have code execution. That's pretty cool. That took how long? A few minutes? Now with more mad programming skills, we copy paste our next code. This time we'll put it into the programming area up above and we're going to execute it to the Pi, but we're going to save it. This time we'll save it as main.py. This means it will always be executed every time the Pi fires up. And off to the bench, plug in the USB. This is just power only and we have a blinking light. So this hello world code blinking the onboard LED works. Not terribly impressive, but pretty cool. Now to test our code, our hardware, and our abilities some more, let's change this to three seconds between. In Python, this isn't in millis or, or any strange units, it's straight up seconds. Back to the bench, we'll give the Pico some power and we should see a three second cycle. Sure enough, we have three seconds before flashy flash. So we've proven that we can get this up and going in MicroPython in just a matter of moments. Copy paste, drag drop, super simple. No fancy IDEs, just Thony to install and you're away to the races. Now that we're all set up with MicroPython, the sky's the limit. We can try out code, different sensors, different hardware, and see how far we can take this $4 little board. Impressive stuff. Although it doesn't have Wi-Fi or Ethernet capability, I think that's going to be okay. With the machine learning capabilities of the ARM Cortex processor, I think we're going to be able to do some pretty unique stuff with this board. Stay tuned for upcoming videos. I'm Eric from the Make Me Lab. Good luck in all your projects.